Hi, I'm Jenny Shelton and this is the RSPB's headquarters in Sandy, where fantastic work is being done to restore this heathland habitat to benefit a range of wildlife species. Now this is lowland heath, but there's no reason that this can't be the same in the uplands. We've all been for walks in places like the Peak District or the North York Moors and seen these vast heather wastelands as far as the eye can see and we think this is perfectly normal but it's not these are not natural habitats these are artificially cultivated for grouse shooting but just imagine a walk on the moors where there were streams and broadleaf woodland as well as scrub and heather and you were almost guaranteed to see birds of prey mountain hares golden eagles even now wouldn't that be fantastic these are just some of the species that we should expect to see out on the moors. Probably the most evocative and haunting moorland sound is the undulating call of the curlew, Britain's largest wader. The UK population of curlew is incredibly important. We host around a quarter of the global population, but still they are declining fast in the UK and need urgent help. Dumpy, skulking, short legs, round looking. Hey, if I were a snipe, I might take umbrage to some of those descriptions, except for the fact they are pretty accurate. Snipe are pleasingly plump. They have an incredibly sensitive bill, which they use for probing around in the soft earth, looking for invertebrates. Sometimes known as a mountain blackbird, ring oozles have those distinctive white bibs. And if you see them close enough, you might notice their feathers have an almost scaly appearance. The diamond shaped tail and the real heavy set beak marks out the raven from all other corvids. Listen for their throaty crunk crunk. Merlins, these diminutive falcons are quite like kestrels in appearance and enjoy a good feed on smaller birds and mammals. Pairs often hunt together. Now there's no reason at all why we shouldn't see golden eagles in North Yorkshire or the Lake District. Unfortunately though, these magnificent birds continue to be deliberately poisoned and trapped and just aren't able to expand their range. And that's just the birds. Moors should be teeming with wildlife like mountain hares, stoats and weasels, maybe even beavers. We all want to see these species reclaim the uplands and that could be achieved through different management practices. Less intensive grazing, less intensive burning and the creation of a mosaic of woodland, scrub and open habitats. We're losing wildlife at an alarming rate and this is only going to get worse unless we see meaningful change. To me, more wildlife on our moorlands can only be a good thing.